Thanks for tuning in to Becoming Something, where we promise to keep the conversation honest and real for young adults in their 20s and 30s. Every moment we live is training for a future moment, and that's why we do this podcast, because we want you to be prepared for everything that life is going to throw at you. Our hope with this podcast is that it would help you become all that God desires you to be. So with that in mind, let's jump right in to this week's episode of Becoming Something. What's up, podcast world? It's your boy, JP, in the podcast studio with my friend, Nate Hilgenkamp, and Kathy, super giddy today, trying to be chill, I'm but can't really be chill. I'm really excited today. Yeah, it's a good day. I can tell. Yeah. I can tell. No reason in particular. You almost ruined my intro, Kathy. Oh, yeah, <laughs> okay. There's a lot of things I've no, almost ruined on yeah, this podcast. That's, <laughs> it's fine. I mean, some would say you've ruined the podcast. Okay. I mean, that's what a lot of, I mean, that is what a is lot of reviews you, have a said. A lot of reviews. Bro, how'd you get that sweatshirt? Yeah, and how come we don't have one? Just because you're the famous guy, you get He's the so free swag. swag? This I didn't, didn't even know that that sweatshirt existed. This didn't show up in y'all's mailbox? No, <laughs> no I don't get any stuff. Kathy has it. Actually, and you got something today too. What? You got deodorant, na- all natural deodorant, because you made fun of it a month ago yes. on the podcast. So that's, that's how we get free things. So both of y'all get stuff. This podcast so sponsored by Beauty Counter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, thank wow. you for whoever sent us the uh, all natural deodorant. Yeah. I'll give it a shot. I don't, I don't know think it's gonna work. which one is is for Nate and which one's for me. Was it the rose or the lavender? <laughs> They were the girliest Wait, flavors seriously? I've ever. I guess they're not flavors. flavors? You don't eat it. Flavors. Nate, do you Sense. eat deodorant? Is Nate this did. He like, licked it. Is that what happened to your brain cells? Well, it was all natural, so oh, I okay. assume I can. Hey, that's a fair oh question, though. Is that what happened yeah. to your brain cells? <laughs> Where did they go? I don't know. A traumatic wow. birth, I think. Something <laughs> something happened there. Was it a traumatic birth? Yeah, my mom had to have a C-section. My brain, my my head is too. We it's believe too deep. that it is too so big. It, yeah, yeah. Your head, your was head too is deep? too big. Well, it's too, it's it's too large, but it's not like. But did you say too deep? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's not. I mean, like it's it's like a deep head. I don't the, understand. The people on the camera can see it, so. I don't. It's it's like wide this way. <laughs> so, <laughs> Why the long face? Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Unbelievable. You do have a deep head. Now I do. That I'm Hat, at hats it. don't fit on me. Oh, deep, poor Nate. So. Deep head. It's a rough life. <laughs> We're gonna call you Hatchet. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> I don't know. This feels like appropriate. Gosh, guys, today. Yeah. Like this. This is one of those like weird favors we have to do for jp's friends i've never heard of this person like oh i feel gosh. like no who's gonna listen this week like it's just it's just one of those favors for someone that jp knows and no one else that's does that's a great you know, way to start off the, the old, she she's gonna listen to the yeah. beginning of this she's gonna no, hear this part yeah she's this? gonna hear this part okay what's her name jenny jenny allen has jenny she done allen. anything um, yeah she's done like one or two things okay J- so, well y- y'all will have to tell me because i i don't i can't even pretend i'm so excited you're just a silly. You're the worst. <laughs> don't don't act like when when we went. You can't tell this story. When we went to lunch with her, you can't tell that. You were like, guys, Jenny Allen knows my name. Oh my <laughs> and you've rubbed that lunch in my face at least like fifteen times. The, I'm not kidding. That's what like, he said. That's what he said today because Kathy was <clears throat> geeking out, and he, he was like, oh, it's it's normal for me because you know we've had lunch before. I mean, because Jenny Allen's like, yeah, y'all are close personal friends. All talk right. all the time. I mean, Here's the deal. Usually we would call her right now, uh, but now we're in this like fancy studio and we can't do our, you know, I don't even know what you call that. We've been upgraded. Yeah, we've been. I don't like it. I like the old school, like when we were in the conference room and we used your cell no phone. No one could the good see old days. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the good I old like days. When when no one could see us cell phone and, I and people would call me <laughs> while we were on the deal. All right, let's let's bring on our friend Jenny Allen. There Jenny, she is. Jenny, can you hear us? Are you there? I can hear you. Let's go. Hi. Let's I'm go. Here. How's your day? Hi guys. Hi. Let's go. Wait, are you you're in Dallas? Is uh, that, I are, am in Dallas. Are you yes. at your office or is that your like Yep. That's a Yep. That, I know you look fancy. That's a fancy We're up studio. At the If Gathering stu- Studios today. The If Recording Gathering. What I mean look, that look thing. Look at your fancy selves yeah, at your table. I know. <laughs> I know. We're, our we're plastic big, table. Big time. <laughs> we actually have a table coming. That's our, our <laughs> it's our kitchen table. Is it we're really your here, home table? But I'm trying to replace it Aww. so that we can bring that one up here. Wow. Because I'm taking one for character. the team. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. It's it's very like Magnolia. Ginny, how's IF going? Like what what is that like? I mean, I, I feel like I've just seen that 
blow up and take over the world and the Lord is I mean he's just doing something crazy through that ministry yeah. I mean what has that journey been like well it has been a journey it has been really fun to watch what he's done and and surprising certainly and it's also a heavy thing to steward right mm -hmm. you you have a a calling like that and there's definitely some parts of it that I I find um <laughs> not the most fun thing I do, but I'm so proud of, of my team. I'm so proud of the relationships that we have across different denominations and ages. And it just feels like this beautiful tapestry of, of the church right now when we come together. And, and then the best part of it is, is the women in their spaces all over the world, all over the globe that lead individually. They're the ones that, have built this thing and made it what it is because we only host 3000 people in person, but we host a million around the planet. Yeah, and the crazy. way that happens is through all of these women that say, I want to host and, and I want to host in my home or I want to host in my church. And there's some events that we had, you know, last year we had like 6,500 events happening at the same time. We had some that were, you know, larger 500 people. We had some that were in a living room yeah. and it's just beautiful how, they say yes and and do all the work we yeah. we feel like we just serve them and give them a tool they can use in their worlds to lead their people a million people around the world are being ministered to through this ministry all at one time like what an <laughs> incredible picture it's hard to it's hard to picture i i don't i don't often get my head around it we were just at passion and and Kate leaned over and said, hey, mom, how does it feel that these 60,000 students represent like 1 20th of, of if or something? Wow. Yeah. Whoa. And you never, you know, we're just in. And all of a sudden it's like, oh. Thing, but then there's all these thousands of other rooms and all these people tuning in in the underground church. All we see, we can see where they tune in from. And no we're in way. 144 countries. And it just, I mean, I say all that. It sounds like I'm bragging, except that I literally am a spectator. I feel like. <laughs> Yeah. I feel like I'm sitting there like jaw drop too. And we can't believe it because it really is. It was God's vision. We felt like we were just always carrying it as best we could. And honestly, the beginning was so messy. And so I can't even believe it exists yeah. how much we like fumble the ball early on. And at the beginning, was yeah. it was there technology like in the beginning? Was it just the people no. that were there? Yeah, no, we started that first year, but we were I mean, we were nobody had done this. Like, yeah. I mean, I hate to say that because probably someone will be like, we had done it. Right. Largely, people had not done virtual conferences. Yeah. And I would say we were the way, especially the way we did it, which was anyone can host in their home. Well, and especially the way we did it, which was pay what you can. So we yeah. genuinely yeah. had so many people hosting and and so and that was just complete faith because we didn't have a big donor behind the scenes covering the rest and yeah. Nate years, said he covered it <laughs> yeah <laughs> so I he, for sure watched in home that first year and I don't know how much I covered so sorry about yep. yeah well if you were like the majority of people it was an average of $25 was the on the high end actually that sounds about I, right Jenny, Jenny I want to I want to just commit to you right now that I, I promise on everything that Kathy did not pay you $25. <laughs> I, I guarantee you, you go find that I'm 97, find that 97 <laughs> cent <laughs> gift. Oh and gosh. that's the one that came from Kathy. That one. <laughs> I'm sorry. I loved it though. No, I'm guessing sub $1. I let's not talk about it. Let's okay. keep, keep going. Tell us more about if it's so amazing. Oh, we good. I froze. Her. Jenny, see, she, I, disappointed I her. said 97 <laughs> cents and she just like hung up. She's like, I'm out on that. <laughs> no, no there you are. We're good. Oh my gosh, Jenny, uh, Jenny, I'm shocked that you said your life. That's that. That's not the most fun part of your life, or it's it's difficult because everyone I talk to wants to be Jenny Allen. I can't tell you how many people <laughs> have said uh, uh, seriously. <laughs> Nate, like Nate, Nate came to work. Nate wants to be Jenny. Allen. Nate, Nate <laughs> I came to work. Be you. He came to work in a blonde wig today. I think JP, JP knows some of my demons. But yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm shocked that you're yeah, not I like, mean, my life is so easy and I'm well known and oh. famous and fun. And like, that's how people perceive your life. Who in leadership finds it easy and fun? Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I appreciate it a lot of days and there, and I'm so honored and blessed to get to do what I'm doing. It's not like I'm sitting around moping about it, but 
I would say it's just weighty. There's yeah. just a lot of pressure. And, and I don't mean pressure from people like people pleasing. That was my 20s. I'm well past that. Yeah. I could not be doing this if, if approval was still the thing mm-hmm. I crave in life. Yeah. But responsibility to God, like you don't want to, you want to be faithful with what he gives you. And, and I think there's just a heaviness to leading people. And, and this is true. I mean, every pastor feels this way. I think every leader on earth feels this way right now, that they're, they're hurting people. There are things that matter and we want to help them. And the burden of that sometimes can be just making really hard decisions and, and then also just being faithful to, to do what God called us to do and nothing more and, and nothing less. I mean, I, I'm someone who creepily thinks about death every day. And I am not, I don't know why this is Man, my lot too. in life. It's like one me of my too. thorns. I think about death all the time. Same. I'm morbid. No, and it's, it's, I think the gift wait. of that is that I can, I think about death and then I actually want to live for that. And so I think that's probably the biggest burden is just, I appreciate the gift of a day that was fun and in the studio and talking to people like y'all, but the the end of my life is what I want to do well with. And I just want to make sure all of that's pointing in the right direction. Mm. And again, I can't do it perfectly. And I know that, and I've learned that, Um, but there still is a weight to that. Well, Paul says to live is Christ, to die is gain. And so I think we've got to get our heads around that, which uh, is a, a great transition, I think, to the ministry that you find yourself in the middle of right now is kind of who is around you and you have written this book find your people which i'm pumped about because that's something i don't know how you do this but i i i do feel i wouldn't say envy envious i would say uh excited that it seems like you kind of find those topics that are the leading issues of that day and you you did that the the first time or not the first time but i'll say last time when just everybody's stuck in their head and you're calling them to get out of you know their head and now i just keep bumping into people that are struggling with isolation uh they 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 feel lonely and they want to make friends and so now you've written this book find your people and so tell us like how did god give you that vision Mm -hmm. what's what does the journey to that look like well it wasn't timely in the sense of wow, I, I noticed this was a need, so I'm going to whip out a book. This was five years ago. I was in Uganda, and I saw these two women, and they had buckets on their head to go get water for the day. And they were in beautiful, um, colorful clothing in Africa, and, and they were giggling. I mean, just laughing together. And we were just driving by. I didn't get to know them, but I was so struck by them because – I I know everybody cares about charity water and all the beautiful ministries that are helping bring water to villages. And that definitely matters. People are dying um, from not having clean water. So I'm in favor of that. However, I wonder if we have so protected our lives from everything that causes us to need each other. Yeah. That we're no longer happy. Wow. And when I was watching those women, I was jealous of them. And Mm. when I would go into their villages that were... Um, beautiful they would be sitting together and they would be shucking corn or they would be sitting together and they'd be washing clothes or they'd be sitting together and they'd be tending to their babies together and I just thought they don't have doors on their huts all the huts are really close together Um, there's usually like a fire pit outside where they all gather and and I just thought what are those things that that cause them to delight Mm -hmm. the way that I don't see many people I know delighting in Mm -hmm. life yeah and and so I just began to study. It made me curious, honestly. And then we end up in Europe and, and go to Italy to see some family members, which is really weird. We have Italian fam- family members. And so we're in this little bitty non-touristy part of Italy. And we walk in a grocery store and everybody in the grocery store stops and stares at Zach and I and our family. And, and just they're like, who are you? What are you doing? And And I just knew like, they never have strangers walk in here. They yeah. were all in little pods in the grocer talking. And they probably do that every two to three days because most of the food in there was cheese and meat and milk. And it wasn't, you know, perishable or, or it was perishables. And so they probably are coming in and out of that store every three or four days. And, and after, you know, we had caused our ruckus, they just went back to their conversations in Italian talking to each other. And, 
I think all of these things just made me feel like, what am I missing? And how could I build a life that involves closer proximity to people and, and relationships that don't change every few years, but are really committed over a long haul. And so I did, I did the research. I actually like looked biblically and I looked throughout history and mm. in get out of your head. I looked at the science and, and find your people. I looked at the history yeah. and I looked at the story of humanity and, and how it's gone for people. And loneliness really didn't show up on the scene until after the industrial revolution. Wow. So you look back throughout history and you see communal people. And we know that from Genesis, you see a communal God that created people in his image. So he created them to be communal, not to want community, not to desire to have it, but they were communal just in their very presence and essence, just like God is communal in his essence. And, and so it's something we are, it's not something we crave. It's something yeah. we, we just are. And yeah. so Kurt Thompson says it this way. He's a neuro, a Christian neuroscientist. He says, he says, we come into the world looking for someone looking for us. Wow. That's and I think that's just how we're all living. We're all looking for someone looking for us. And yeah, mm -hmm. the pandemic has made it worse, but, but honestly, the statistics prior to the pandemic were three and five mm -hmm. and we're lonely. And now I would guess, you know, it's probably five and five, if not, you know, four, four and five or five and five, because we all mm -hmm. just got <laughs> isolated. Yeah. So I think we're all craving this. Why, why do you like, and, but why do you think so? Like it, it does seem that that is the issue. I talked to this guy this past Friday night and, and he was talking about loneliness. And, and at first he started in the context of, of dating. And I was talking about, you know, dating in groups and, and he's just said, Hey, I, I don't have a group. Now this is a, I mean, this is a guy that we would all want to have coffee with and enjoy and nice, likable mm -hmm. guy. And, and I'm just like, what do you mean? You don't like, it's Friday night. What are you doing tonight? He's like, nothing. I'm sitting at home in my apartment. I'm like, dude, like we'll call some people over, you know, like go grab your favorite movie or a board game or something and, and go like, hang out. Why is that such a challenge for people today? We, one, we, we coming out of <laughs> two years of, of that being all nearly required of us, right? Most of our social calendars were pretty cleared for at least a year of that time. And so we've got to get back in the practice of it. So that's just a reality right now, but there's way more to it. So, so we've got several issues. So the first issue is culturally, as I've said, we are not built this way. We are mm -hmm. built to be um, independent. We barely will borrow an egg from a neighbor, right? Mm -hmm. we, we don't want to bother anyone for anything. So we've got a cultural brokenness that's just in our, um, it's the only way we've known to live and, and it's really broken. Uh, then we've got the enemy that hates it. If this is of God and from God and for God, then the enemy hates it. So mm -hmm. he's out to destroy any health in relationships that we have. So there's an enemy, but then we've just been dadgum hurt, right? Like I, I am, I have been horrible at this and I have been hurt by this. Mm -hmm. And, and one of the, th the beginning truths of the book is, is there's three things you've got to know. Number one, people are going to disappoint you. You're going to disappoint them, but God won't disappoint us. And there's something about understanding and setting our expectations to, to go about this in the right way that it helps. But why is it just so hard to say yes? I think that's the hope that this book would change for people is they would feel convicted to start saying yes, to, yeah. start, to start making the call, to start making the plan. And it can start with little things. It doesn't have to be a Friday night. It can just be, instead of running that errand alone, you know, text your friend and say, hey, do you need to go to Costco? Let's go together. Like just little things. It doesn't have to be, it can be along the way of the life you're already mm -hmm. leading. It doesn't have to be, you know, something that you add in addition to your life. It needs to be found in the crevices of the life you're already leading. So the book is Find Your People. If you're listening right now, push pause on the podcast, swipe up, go to Amazon, get it. This releases February 22nd, and you pre-ordered. You're probably going to get it early, uh, as often happens with Amazon. Go to your favorite bookstore. Make sure that you get Find Your People by Jenny Allen. Uh, does the book, Jenny, uh, does it touch on the idea of community? Like, I know that's something that has, you know, God has used in my life more than anything else to conform me to the image and the character of Jesus. I know that you also, you and Zach, uh, kind of do life in the context of community. And so what does that look like as it relates yeah. to this book? Well, as you know, um, we at one point were a part of the same church and this church very much uh, 
surprise is that? And we got here to Dallas and we needed to make friends. And I reached out to an old counselor from camp, which was a 20 year old friendship that I had not really kept in touch with her. And I mean, that's awkward. And I just want to say all of this requires awkwardness. Mm -hmm. Like it, it is just, there's not a road around being awkward because that is a desperate move, like to call someone after 20 years and, and, she, but she lived nearby and I liked her back then. And I thought maybe, you know, let's just go to coffee. And so I asked her to coffee. We have a good time. She asked me about small group and have you thought about it? I was like, well, not yet. Anyway, that was our entrance into our small group that we're still in five years later. And so I always just say, brave the awkward coffee date, say yes to the crazy people that say you're going to share everything. I mean, they, we get there and they're like, we're going to share our finances. And I'm like, okay. And so I'm thinking percentages or that <laughs> kind of thing. They're like, no, you're going to bring all the, all the dollar amounts. Yeah. Did you bring like, those oh, today? Yeah. We'd like to take a yeah, look. We we'd those love to, <laughs> we'd love to, um, just, we thought that would be, uh, you know, I think that would help sure with online. ratings. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. You can <laughs> find it online. That's probably true. Yeah. Yeah. So we all, I mean, I'm just sitting there going, wow, th this is no joke, but gosh, I mean, it is so rich and good and freeing to be in accountability. That's one of the things I talk about in the book is you can look back through scripture. You can look to um, the way people have always done life and you can see patterns of living that we're not living <laughs> anymore. And one of those is accountability. Mm. Um, you, you look at villages around the world and, and even today there's, there's tribal elders in in many African villages and, and there's a sense of they're accountable to each other. And I remember one of my friends, Jay, who I'll, I'll interview on my podcast and, and have before he grew up in um, the slums of Nairobi. And he said, I would be on the opposite side of the slums and somebody would yell my name first and last name and yell my grandmother's name saying, I'm going to tell your grandmother what you just did. Like, and, and I think there's something about a village where, where you get caught. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I think my small group is that part of that life for mm -hmm. me where where we get caught with each other and we choose it. So, no, my my kids are not, you know, necessarily, um, you know, running across and getting yelled at that their grandmother's going to hear about it. But honestly, because we've chosen proximity, which is the first pattern, I think is really important because we've chosen to live in proximity to our family, because we've chosen to be, live in proximity to um, a small group of friends that hold us accountable those friends show up at small group and they're like, Oh, I heard about what your son did. I heard, <laughs> you know, and, and there's an, yes, it's not the same as the slums yeah. of Nairobi, but there's something about it that kind of is, yeah. but those are intentional choices we made when we moved here. We said we wanted five friends within five miles and, and that came through our local church and choosing a small group. Yeah. And wow. we, yeah, we're experiencing that, uh, a, you know, a little bit more in Waco too. I mean, there's just the, the downside of a smaller community is everybody knows everything mm -hmm. and the upside of a smaller community is everybody knows everything mm -hmm. and you know in that in that slum in Nairobi I mean I, I bet if it's the slum I'm thinking I mean regardless of what slum it is it's probably over uh, close to a million people or hundreds of thousands of people and yet you're doing life so close together <laughs> that's what it is is this there's it's just quite literally life on life on life on life right there's no doors right and, and that's, that's right no doors yeah. And so I think that's the, those are the things I, I built the book around some of those images. Like one of the chapters is a fire and one of the chapters is open doors. And, and I took these images from village life and said, how can we hmm. apply this? There are ways to apply it. Zach and I, when we moved to Dallas, the first thing we did was we got our fire pit hooked up and, and, and of course, as soon as people started coming over, that's where everybody goes. We are always in our backyard around our fire. And when I did the research on fires, it's so cool you there's actually something neurologically that happens when you sit around a fire with people and this is something people have done for all time right there's something that decompresses you can talk without looking face to face you're actually looking at something mm -hmm. and something about that relaxes you and helps you open up i mean it was crazy the yeah. science around fires yeah. and so i'm like 49.99 as a fire pit on amazon yeah. and and all of us you know are struggling with we can't gather we can't be well you can be outside together and you can sit in an adirondack chair six feet away from someone else so <laughs> it kind of was just cool how looking at the way people have always lived brought parts of it to my very urban setting mm -hmm. in a metroplex that i could actually create and now i can't leave my door open all the time but <laughs> um you know it's pretty much a revolving door 
anyway. I've always wondered how to say that, Adirondack. <laughs> Adirondack <laughs> chair. <laughs> so <laughs> if you've learned nothing else from this podcast, it is Adirondack. Adirondack. Uh, the book is Find Your People with Jenny Allen, just talking about the idea of friendships and community. And you, you guys crush this, where I do feel like every time we are even moving close to Dallas. You're like, hey, come over. Let's hang out. Y'all, you and Monica, let's hang out tonight. And, uh, and, and so I think about what, a, what about people who struggle? And I know you've run into this. It's like, but the house isn't clean. And I just, I really don't want someone coming. I'd never comfortable enough to, you know, take the door off, if you will, or keep the door open. And I think that's for Monica and I, we always wanted that uh, idea of just like kids running in and out of the house. People always welcome and I think when you move to the practical of like, oh, we have to get stuff done tonight or we have this basketball game or this going on, it becomes a little bit more challenging. And so any counsel or advice there? Well, I think part of the village mentality is that you notice everyone around you. So those basketball games, you're not sitting there alone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One of the people reading the book early, it was cute. We were in this little Facebook group together, some of us. And um, she said, the craziest thing happened yesterday. She said, I've been sitting next to this girl at gymnastics forever. And and at my daughter's when we're watching and we usually just wave and then we scroll and look at our phones and and she said yesterday because of the book i just decided to ask her better questions and and we started talking and she said we ended up talking for 30 minutes and then we decided next week to have a game night with our husbands (laughs) so they're gonna now have a double date and i just think we've got to look at like what's we i'm not suggesting that you add a bunch of social events to your calendar Mm -hmm. i'm suggesting that you notice the social events that are already built into your life so good. and who's walking their dog in front of your house every morning that you've really never said more than hi to and and who do you you know see at the coffee shop every single time you go anyway and and just to begin to take who's already in front of you and go a little bit deeper and what's cool about village life is is you get stuck together you're in proximity you open up a little bit and there's this sense of you know we're looking for are three to five best friends. But God's view of community is bigger and it actually is all different ages, different life stages, and it's richer. And so what I noticed was my college babysitter became one of my dearest friends. She's a, down the hall in the If Gathering offices now and works mm-hmm. with us. She's one of my favorite people to hang out with. She just traveled with us and I just noticed along the way she became my friend. Now, my old self probably would have never called her my friend. I might have called her like my mentee or or my babysitter, but I never would have called her my friend. But when I really looked at how people have lived throughout history and, and what the Bible says, the, those are not barriers that mm. that usually are made in culture and in the world. In fact, the more likely thing is that they would be called family. Mm. And so throughout history, people, a family group was often many aunties, uncles, cousins, grandparents, friends of their grandparents. It was like these were the aunties that were by blood and aunties that were just adopted aunties and all these people lived very close together and they were considered a family and then you see in the 1950s a marketing move that someone made where they said okay a nuclear family is going to be two adults and two and a half children and then we could sell more goods because they would each need their own things rather Mm -hmm. than this idea of a big family that shared everything and worked together and i think it's important to understand like we've been conditioned this way so that they can sell more toasters mm. <laughs> like there's there was a plan and it was to divide us with fences and mm. to live individual lives where where there were no aunties speaking into my kids lives like they do in africa when cooper went back to africa my son's from rwanda when he went back home um to africa and, and we hung out there for for a season he had five people that said i'm auntie alice i'm uncle so-and-so and they all introduced themselves and immediately they started correcting him they started <laughs> telling him what to do and and he was like yes sir yes ma'am like he thought it was the greatest thing ever to be back with his you know rwandan people and and i thought it was the most amazing thing ever i'm in a foreign country with my adopted son who's having a hard time and processing so many big things and i had this this army around me that mm-hmm. was parenting beside me and this is what i hope for people mm-hmm. i'm not trying to get people two or three new best friends I'm trying to get people to see their entire universe differently, to see that God has placed people around you and all the spheres of your life to help you live this life. Mm. And it's richer and fuller if you let them in instead of all of us just keeping our distance and not wanting to bother everybody. But it does take vulnerability to 
you know, allow your kid to act that way in front of someone where they would correct them and not just jump in and do it yourself. Hmm. It does require like a loss of um, pride to, to let people help you with things. Mm -hmm. But it's not like we're winning. We've got anxiety and depression <clears throat> rampant. We've, we're not winning. Right. And so my hope is that this just starts a new conversation and gives people new eyes to see their world as a world of people that need them and that they need rather than this isolated thing we're doing, which isn't working. Yeah. Yeah. So good. Speaking of armies, I got one beat next you. One. Okay. Um, one great job at passion. Um, oh come on! Okay. Don't suck up. No, I'm not. I'm. I'm this like. Oh, you didn't think it was good, Nate? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk about how you closed. We can talk about that later. Oh my but, gosh! Yeah. Whatever. I want to okay. talk about how you say auntie, but we can talk about that. <laughs> she later. says it the right way. Yeah, I knew uh, that's how. You, I knew that that's what right you way. would say. I, was I knew trying, you I, would say. Who's that. the suck up now? Okay. <laughs> Speaking of passion, great job. But the thing that made me, I like literally cried. Uh, I follow Jamie Ivy on Instagram as well. And when you were introduced at passion, yeah. she panned yeah. over. I'm going to cry right now to like I all know. your friends that flew from all over to be there to support you. And like they were beaming with pride. And I honestly was just happy that you had such good friends in your life. And like I was thinking of who are those people in my life who would go for such a moment. But also, like, there, some of those women are also speakers. They're also authors. They also have some sort of a platform. And I was wondering, like, how do y'all handle, like, comparison and competition? Because it looked like you had an army of women who were cheering you on and being your biggest supporters. But I, do y'all, like, what do you do when you encounter competition and comparison? Because for girls, it's, it is such a big deal. I think it is. I, I don't feel that way. And maybe it goes back to it being a little bit weighty. I see friends as advocates mm -hmm. and co-laborers. And so for me, and I think they all feel that way too, at If Gathering, we've never struggled. I mean, I'm not saying no one has ever struggled with comparing at If, I'm sure they have, but that I have not heard that conversation happen at If. Wow. It, there is a sense of, of if, you're, if you're with us, you're with us hmm. and we're not here long. And we're, we're running after the same purposes and it's hard and we're getting shot at. Mm -hmm. So there's a sense of like, we've got each other. Mm -hmm. And, and so, you know, I'm, I'll give you, you want some juice? I'll give you some juice. Yeah. Um, spill the tea. I don't want any juice. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even like juice. They want, they want the juicy. They stuff. want the juicy. Okay, juice. Just JP, close your ears. So that group, we have bonded because we are in counseling together. Oh, amazing. <laughs> um, we are in therapy and it is group therapy. And, really? And I'm saying this because part of why they were there is that I have been working through some things. I'm trying to decide what to say right now. Yeah, that's no, okay. say, um, if you're no. going to give us the juice, no. say all the juice. Okay. You're talking about so authenticity I and stuff like that. I don't want part of the juice. With them. I've been working through with them the pressure I feel with work hmm. and where it's coming from because I actually, you're exactly right, Nate, that I love work mm -hmm. and I'm blessed to get to do what I do. And why is there with it such a hard, a hard part? Like, mm -hmm. and I want to know if that's from God, I'll carry the thorn. If that's not from God, I want to fight it. And so I've been working through that in therapy and counseling and what I really, I mean, I'm really going to go here. Okay. okay. Um, what I realized in therapy was that when I was 12, I felt and realized there was a pressure to perform mm -hmm. in my family and in my life. When I realized that, that feeling um, entered my life. I don't remember it prior, but when it entered, I, it was heavy and weighty and, and it does not always come with ministry, but when it comes just pressure, I'm just going to use that word. Sometimes my 12 year old shows up. Now what I mean mm -hmm. by that, all of y'all that are listening are like, yeah, this sounds like therapy. Um, it is my 12 year old shows up and she throws a little fit and she acts 12 and she's very insecure and mm -hmm. she is very fragile and she doesn't want to do it and she wants to run and she doesn't want to do it. And so what's been hard for my 40 something self is to, to watch my 12 year old act that way. And, and I've been very confused. Like, mm. okay, I love my job. I get to do it with people I love. Why am I? why is everything in me physically I don't want to do it anymore I want to quit and so when I've got to realize like okay you know this is 
this is all from my past. And like, I've brought this into my life now. I could start to sort it out. And so they all came. <laughs> This is this so is vulnerable. An, oh my god. JP, are you like making fun of me in your heart and head? I just want no, to know. No. I don't we I'm wait, I'm, wa I'm waiting for it. Yeah. I, listen, we we can edit this out if we need to, yeah. so just go wherever you want to go. We already know and, this. Like, he tells us everything you oh guys talk god. about. Yeah. That that crew was there because they knew this was a high pressure moment oh for my me. Gosh. Yeah. And they wanted I mean, I know this is gonna sound really cheesy to people, but they wanted to show up for twelve year old Jenny. Like they yep. were like, if that girl shows up and she feels pressure, like we're gonna be there mm. for her. Yeah. And you know what's crazy is and this is what I believe about people and connection and why I think it matters more than anything on earth except for a connection with God, is is they have healed something in me. Mm. Like mm. like just being seen and known for that weakness that's a little bit embarrassing. I mean, just probably a lot embarrassing. Um, and and then not just known about it, but just like, <laughs> we're gonna show up. Yeah. Like we're gonna be there. And if you're 12, if you're on the side before you go up and you can't go, mm. we're gonna be there to help you go. Like yeah. that was their point. Man. Yeah. And, and it changes everything. That 12 year old did not show up by the way. Oh, um, awesome. I was my 40 year old self <laughs> that that was called to do that moment and to, to lead in that way. But I believe one reason she didn't show up is because I've been with them processing mm. it and and it set me free. Yeah. And I think that's the power Amazing. of people and connection mm -hmm. is is when we brave vulnerability and say the things that are hard to say, they're not so hard to say next time. I could say it on a podcast right now because yeah. I'm not as ashamed about it because I think all of us have that in our mm -hmm. lives and I'm just grateful I have a place that I've been able to process it and get freedom from it and it's okay like it's not mm -hmm. it's not something that um, that it's it's changing me I should yeah. say to be able to process that with a group of people and so we're processing everything so yeah. yes they there's no competition there is a I love a that. shoulder to shoulder holding each other up yeah so he, here's what just happened is everyone listening you said everyone has that and and the power of empathy because we realize that we do like everybody i always think about my eight-year-old self if you will and everybody right now is longing to have their people cheering on uh them in case their 12 year old self shows up mm -hmm. and so thank you I'm, yeah. I'm so proud of you and and just constantly cheering you on encouraged by the work that god is doing through you. I know you had a question. You got to go, go fast. Okay, go. fast. Okay. Do you think this message, this book, is for guys? Because I feel like girls need community more than guys do. Here at Harris Creek, it's like seventy percent of young adult girls are. There's like seven girls to three guys in young adult community here at Harris Creek. It's like guys would rather just sit at home by themselves, watch a football game. Do guys need community as much as girls do? Guys need community more than girls do. Oh, no! because hot take. They're less. They're less likely to admit that they need it. Yep. And so therefore they're less likely to seek it out. So no, I absolutely plan the cover and the title in such a way that I hope a lot of guys will read it. It is definitely not just for women, although that's my context. Uh, there's, this is, these practices apply to all the people. There's no, there's nobody this doesn't apply to. I interviewed uh, men and women. I, I feel like this is needed across the board for, there's nobody that does not need this right now. Do you feel like Nate would benefit from the book? <laughs> I, I, I think Nate needs the book. And how can you coach me up on like, I want to, I really want to move from seeing him as my mentee yeah. to my friend. <laughs> Is that like, how do I go I about? I know you look up to me. How do I go about doing his that? Just quit patting him on the head. <laughs> yeah. His big his, head. His big, deep, deep head. head. All right, friend. Hey, we're so thankful for you. Yes. Thank you for coming on, becoming something. The book is Find Your People, Jenny Allen, February 22nd. But make sure you get it now so you get it early. You're going, listen, I read the last book and uh, experienced all the emotions. I laughed out loud. I cried. I um, couldn't sleep one night because I was afraid and had all of the things. Sorry. And so, yeah, yeah. I'm not I'm not bitter, but uh, I'm excited. I'm excited to read this one and and um, you're welcome and for have 
you're welcome for letting you on. Hopefully, this can uh, help you get your career off the ground. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. Thank Keep, you. You really need us. Yeah, no Thank problem. you for letting me on. Yeah, yeah no, no problem. problem. Yeah, and I'm, I'm so glad that. Friend. Thank you. I'm glad that Kathy was able to fund yeah, the just remember gathering. your first supporter. Yeah. <laughs> My 97 cents. All right, friend. We will talk. It. We will talk you to you guys, next time. So Thank fun. you. Great See you guys next week. Bye. Awesome. Kathy, you just talked to Jenny Allen. Stop it. She's just a person, Nate. I, You're the it, one who fangirls. I love that honesty, though, because yeah. truthfully, Ooh. I would think Jenny Allen speaking at Passion is like nothing for her. Like, I, I know Passion's a big deal, but I would think it's like whatever. Yep. I speak at Passion, then I speak at If, and then... I'm just going to tell you this because because we're on YouTube also, uh, but you got a little something right here. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. It's like microphone okay, fuss. <laughs> All right. Hey, guys, we love you. We're, we ran long, and we will see you next week. That's awesome. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to Becoming Something, where we promise to keep the conversation honest and real for young adults in their 20s and 30s. Every moment we live is training for a future moment, and that's why we do this podcast, because we want you to be prepared for everything that life is going to throw at you. Our hope with this podcast is that it would help you become all that God desires you to be. To find out more, visit becomingsomething.com.